What I like to do before actually starting a lesson or a, a project is to demonstrate the techniques that we're going to be using while we make the project. For this one, I'm just going to use an Airlight Yellow Deep and I'm going to demonstrate different washes. Now one of the simplest and most pure way to add watercolor or to start working with watercolor on paper is just to take your brush. You saw my brush was fairly moist. I always like to have a blotting paper handy so you can test it out. Oh, look at that lush color. So I'm going to start. See it's full strength here. And then I add a bit of water and I take it And that's just a very soft, gradual blend from potent color into more of a wash. You wouldn't want your whole watercolor to be this intense. Uh, then it'll start to look chalky and it'll be very much like a tempera painting. The beauty of watercolor is that there'll be areas of intense, uh, heavy laid down color. There'll be more ephemeral, lighter areas. And then also working with the white of your paper. In a next session, we will discuss using some uh, masking fluid, which also preserves the white of the paper so that you have that lively, twinkly feeling that you often see in watercolors. Now, another way to approach applying the paint down is wet your paper first. Some, like, some people tape their paper down and you wet the whole paper to get the sizing out, similar to the way I did with the brushes. But I often like to start with the painting in certain areas, add the water, get the paper ready, then add your color, and you're going to see that it performs very differently. And I'm adding a bit of pressure. You see, I'm getting a bit of a light edge in here, and it's much heavier on the sides, so that sort of side loaded the brush. Now that was just with one color, so what we're going to do now with both colors, we're going to go into two colors. Okay, so I'm going to do that again. Add a bit more water up here, or maybe more paint. Then I'm going to come in the bottom with a different color. And you can see there's less water down here, so it should be. I'm going to go in with a red, with a more of a melodious color. And then I'm going to come up. Still pretty wet. So this is like a wet on wet. And see where I can just sort of lightly drag it? And if I want that to be perfectly smooth, like I I will take my brush dry. I'm going to take the red because I know it's still wet and I'm just going to very lightly touch it. And I've got that blended in. So again, it's about amount of paint, amount of water, and about how much pressure you put on your brush. Another effect that I really want to try now is doing a totally unpredictable, very wet base. And now what I'm going to do, instead of laying one color and the other color, I'm going to try and get some unexpected cooling. I'm just going to do, oof, 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 oof. Clean my brush off. Look at those nice, if this wasn't a demo, I'd let those dry. I'm going to go back in with a bit more color to intensify it. I could go back into any of these, but I want to let them dry or else you kind of, um, you still, while the paint's dry, you can reconstitute the color beneath it and you can get unpredictable mixes happening, which I'm trying to avoid in some ways. But others, but, and so in here, I'm just going to put right on top of it. Let's get some of those fun. I'm even take my paper, play with some of those more of a marbled effect. And when that dries, what may happen is that you will get that edge. So you can see it even starting to form right here with the red right along in here. And that's going to pool, but then it's going to dry and the center is going to be more um, lighter in tone and the paint's going to probably go to the edges and pool and you'll get some beautiful defined lines that way. Okay. 
So now it's time to apply this to a project. And what we're going to work with today is doing some fish samples. Uh, fish, these are fun. They're not meant to be realistic. These are stylized fish that I've been playing with that I'll continue to work on throughout the lesson, the plan. But these fish basically take the techniques I just showed you and it's a very um, freeing way to apply them. That's called a fish sampler, shall we?